Welcome to the Creality CR Scan Lizard User Guide video series. It's been a while since I did the last video and there's been some changes to the software since then, so I thought it was worthwhile doing this video before proceeding on with the next ones. So in this video I'm going to show how to update the software and also what changes have been made to the software since the last video. Check the timestamps in the description of this video to jump to sections that may interest you. If you're enjoying the content then consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link can be found in the description of the video. Otherwise, just like and subscribe to the channel to help the channel grow. As always, all information in the description of the video, but for now, enough chat, let's get into it. As said in the intro, since the last video there have been some updates to the CR Studio software, and to avoid confusion, I thought it would be best to do a short video covering these changes before moving forward to the next videos. To begin, how do we actually update the software? If you don't have CR Studio already installed, then all you need to do is go to the Creality Cloud website download page and download the latest version and then install it. If you do already have the CR Studio software installed, then open up the software and you should see a pop-up saying there is a new version available. You can click on upgrade which will download and install the latest version. But if for some reason you miss that pop-up, what you can do to bring it back is to go up to the help menu, click on help and then check update and then click on check. It will check if there's an updated version, so that same window will pop up, and if there is, you can click on upgrade, which will download the latest version. Wait for that to complete downloading, and then we can move on to the install process. Once the download is complete, click on replace, which will close the program, and then click on complete, which will restart the software. To check if we have the latest version, we can go back up to the help menu, click on check update, and click on check. It will see, scan to see if there's a later version, and because we're on the latest, it will say this is the latest version. At the time of recording, the current version is 2.5.4 for Windows, and this was released on the 11th of October 2022. Click OK to that. And also in this window, you can see our latest version is here. It shows you a list of some of the changes that were done in this version, and also a few of the changes in the previous version. So you can click on the cross to close that window. With the update complete, let's cover a couple of the features in the new version. First off, they finally added an undo function. For example, if I hold down control and make a selection with the left mouse button over the mesh, click on delete to delete part of the mesh, I can then push control Z to undo that action and bring back the deleted part. There is a bit of a history as well, so I could do that and delete a couple of parts, do undo once, do undo again bring those two parts back. This doesn't cover every function though. So if I delete one of these scan layers and try and undo that, nothing happens. It seems confined to actions taking place on the mesh data itself, like deleting and moving and rotating, etc. And it does seem a little buggy too. For example, if we enable the move transform and then move this layer by holding uh, Alt, and rotating it and then alt and middle mouse move out of the way you would assume that if i undo it should go back and then rotate back with two steps but if we do that it seems to rotate and move in one step and then if i do another undo it seems to rotate it in a different position so there is some bugginess to the history of the undo function my advice is to continue to save as often as you can and only use undo where you really need to and probably mostly when you're just deleting parts of the mesh the undo function also doesn't have a history of steps once you save and close a project and then reopen it so if i was to delete part of this mesh save it close the project and reopen it and try and undo that step it wouldn't undo that deleted mesh that I deleted away from it. I'm going to reopen our statue and we're not going to make any saves. I'm going to delete these three layers. Now I've reopened the project and I want to show you another feature in this latest version which is that layers now have colors assigned to them which makes it way easier when you're moving and rotating layers around. Um, you can also change the color of the layers as well. Here you can see it's random randomized when I've opened up the project and it's kind of picked a mix of very close yellow colors so it's still quite difficult to tell which one's which. If I click on the color swatch for that layer I can then change this to like a red, close that one, make this one a blue and maybe make this one a pink. And once I move or rotate this scene around a bit, they should all update and change the colors that I've set to them. So this makes it much easier when we go to align different layers 
um, whereas before they were all the same color and it was quite hard to tell if you had moved layer one or layer two but now you can easily identify them using the colors. Another change which I'm not sure why they've done this but previously we had edit mode, table scan mode and hand mode. Uh, for some reason hand scanning has been changed to easy scan. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, it still is uh, hand scanning procedure. Um, for some reason they think that is a more easier way of scanning I suppose and they, therefore they've called it that. But to me it doesn't really make much sense why they've made that change. It still is the same thing though. The final thing I want to mention that they've added, if you go up to the help menu and click on help, it will open this Creality CR Studio to uh, user guide which I think has a ton of useful information and everyone should read through it to get any tips or information they might be missing as there is a lot here. It is a, in a bit of broken English but there are a lot of images used throughout the guide to really get the message across. If you look at the table of contents there is quite a lot of interesting topics so things such as downloading the software which we've just covered in this video, uh, launching the software, importing the calibration file, using it in turntable and handheld mode as we can see here it's still called handheld mode when it's now actually easy mode, some advanced tutorials, editing the model and the shortcut keys. So well worth going through these uh, especially the advanced tutorials and the uh, model editing section go through some good information such as alignment and uh, a few other things like selecting parts of the mesh to delete it. And I think that is everything that we should cover in this latest version of the software. And from here on out, we can move into the next videos just using the new software or the latest version of the software with these changes in place. So that's the end of this video on how to update the CR Studio software and the latest changes that have been made to it. In the next video I'll cover how to do scanning in the hand scan mode which is in the software now called the easy scan mode for some reason but really it's still the same thing. I also want to take a moment and thank everyone for either leaving a comment on my videos or sending a message on my Instagram. It means a lot being able to engage with my audience as it does slowly build. I do my very best to try and answer every message that comes across. I know it has been quite a while since my last video and this is primarily just due to commitments with university taking priority. I do really want to try and be more consistent with this video content so that's going to be quite a big uh, new year's resolution for me for 2023 is to try and be more consistent with this content so i'll be working very hard to have a consistent upload schedule going into next year even if it's just one video a month uh, i would like to at least do two to four videos a month though on various subjects I have a few ideas of topics I want to cover which I think would be fun for myself to create and hopefully engaging for the audience as well. So I'm looking forward to creating this content and hopefully it is as enjoyable to watch as it is for me to produce. For more up-to-date content I recommend heading over to my Instagram page. I tend to post there quite frequently on all the little projects that I'm working on and at the moment that has been this pretty cool hydroponic setup that I built. Just a, a place where I just sort of dump my daily life stuff so it's either industrial design, 3D modeling, mini projects that I'm always getting up to. Um, you're welcome to come through, follow me on Instagram and just see the stuff I get up to. As always, don't forget to show your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel and if possible, even supporting me by buying me a coffee on my support page. Until the next video, thanks for watching.